everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to another episode of Dye Pop PS. Today we are doing sort of a part two of a previous video. We are going to look at an attempt to break some commercial acid dye colors. There's some colors that look like they break from when I've done some crude swatching, so we've pulled a list of some to play around with. I first tried this in Dye Pop PS13, where we looked at a number of colors, including Delphinium Blue, Deep Purple, Sage Leaf, Purple Pop, Avocado, Twilight Gray, and Espresso Bean, all from Dharma Trading Company. Well, today I have a list of some other colors that I want to give it a shot, and I think we're going to have some fun. Now, these videos can run rather long, so I think... I'm going to try to do this as a voiceover over some time lapse, uh, and we'll see, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, but I cannot wait to dive in and play with some colors. I have been saving notes for this video for a while. So I think some of the colors we're going to try today are Jacquard, Periwinkle, and Purple, which is funny because way back in the day I took Jacquard Violet to see if it would break, and it didn't seem to break. and. It looks like that there might be other purples in the line that do break, so it's funny that I picked one that didn't uh, way back when for my first, I think, ever dyeing with acid dyes, or one of the first ever dyeing videos. Um, and I also want to play with Dharma Radioactive, uh, maybe Jacquard Brown, I've heard, uh, Forest Green from Dharma, which does seem to have a bit of a yellow finish. And I want to see if I can capture that. And then Fawn. Uh, from Dharma and so yeah, we'll see if I end up adding some more along the way But those are the ones that we're gonna start out with today. I am pre-soaking the yarn for at least 20 minutes at room temperature This is just plain tap water. No acid The yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn If you want to learn more about it, you can find an affiliate link in the video description This yarn is hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool as an extra tie, I have added on these nylon zip ties that's also just a, like a handy, sturdy way to move the yarn around in a dye pot. I love them. There will also be a link to them in the video description. In each case, we are going to start with eight cups of water, one tablespoon of white vinegar in my dedicated dye pot. We will add half a cup or about 112 milliliters of our dye stir everything up, and then immediately start dip dyeing. Once we've added all the yarn, we'll let things sit for a while and then add more vinegar as needed. But I will use a fresh dye bath for each yarn so that way the starting conditions can be the same. The dye stocks that I'm using today range from one to nine months old, um, and some of them I will be making up fresh. First up is Dharma Radioactive, which is a fluorescent color. I made this stock um, about six weeks ago for another project. Pour the dye in, stir it up, set the spoon aside, and then we immediately started dip dyeing. The heat is still on medium, uh, medium, um, so that way it can heat back up and we see some bubbles, but we will um, raise the heat more as needed. In my opinion, the radioactive definitely broke. We see a green and end up with this neon yellow at the end that has maybe a hint of green, but maybe not. I'm not sure how well this will be captured in the final yarn, but I do know that there's not a fluorescent blue color. So a hypothesis that I've had is that the radioactive is similar to purple pop where you have either your fluorescent yellow or pink with some blue added in to give that neon green color that we uh, see here. After I waited 10 minutes, I added another two tablespoons of white vinegar. There's still a lot of that yellow left behind, but I'm gonna let it heat another 10 minutes, then turn off the heat and let it cool completely in the pot. I think on the lightest area, the most yellow area, we still absorb a tiny bit of blue in there, but this color absolutely breaks. Checking in on the radioactive after an hour or so, the pot is almost completely clear, and there's definitely still some color in here. Um, I don't want to discount that, but 
I am going to go ahead and remove our yarn. As for the breaking, some people might be like, oh, that's just sort of like a dark to light. I maintain that I did see, you know, this be more yellow. It's just I don't think I had captured all of the blue quite yet. So I think that you might be able to see more of this breaking with hand painting where you can watch the, the yellow sort of spread a bit more. Um, but I, I'm in love with this color. I'm planning on washing most of the yarn off camera. But since I think that this one might bleed, since there was some color left, oh, let's wash a radioactive yarn on camera. And this is non super wash, so you want to be gentle. And, you know, in the first one, when there's color left behind, seeing a little bit of color, especially like a pastel yellow come out, is not a big deal because. If you think about it, there's some of that colored water that's still left in the yarn. Let's go ahead and add, that was a lot of it, of some clear dish soap. Figured green would not be super helpful for us here today. I don't know when I'm going to bring out the Simple Paul, <laughs> which is a... Uh, which is a soap that dyers use um, for this exact thing. Um, I am, I am seeing some bleeding here. Now compared to, even though this is a bright color, it is still saturated. So that isn't super concerning, but I'm gonna keep washing this um, and see if I can get the water to run clear. That's already not bad after rinsing out that soap. Okay. Okay. Um, sometimes I get questions about like, oh, I can't ever get the water to run clear. Um, and ultimately, if the amount of bleeding is, seems like a super tiny amount, then I might worry more about washing after I've knit it. But normally, you know, when I'm seeing like a huge amount of saturated color that looks like I added more dye in, that's when I feel concerned. But, Oh, that was not bad at all. That was not bad at all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish washing this, put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And I will wash all the rest of the yarn off camera unless I see something notable and then I'll come back and share that with all of you. I'm using two pots for our videos today so that way I can try to get things sort of as compact as possible. The color Fawn is also one that I mixed up the 1% stock solution about six weeks ago. The 8 quart pot versus 12 quart pot can really only make a difference in terms of the number of inches of water that they're in the pot from the 8 cups, so that can make a tiny bit of a difference as we're dipping. Um, but overall, the acid concentration and everything is the same. With Fawn, I saw a lot of cool tone brown strike at first. And Fawn is a very warm color. So at first I was surprised because I was like, this looks a lot more like pecan brown to me than the Fawn I'm used to. But you see more and more of this reddish orange left behind in the pot as the dipping went on. And so there is definite some, definitely some breaking in here with the browns ending in an orange finish in a very stunning fall toned colorway. The fawn had almost completely cleared after the first 10 minutes, but I did add more vinegar um, and waited some more time on the heat to see if we could get the color to clear. After that additional 10 minutes, the water cooled completely, so um, I just left the yarn in the pot to cool for a little bit, um, but then set it aside so I could wash it. I'm honestly not sure if Jacquard Brown is a color that breaks or not. Some people have said that they've seen it break, and so that is why we are giving it a shot today. When dipping into the Jacquard Brown, I saw some flashes that might look a little bit more yellow towards the end, but ultimately, I'm not entirely sure if there's breaking. I did end up adding some more vinegar in the middle of this process because I wanted to try to see if I could capture some of that more red tone at the end, but honestly, 
I am not sure if I would call this breaking. Um, it is definitely way, I mean, some of the other ones are really subtle as well, but yeah, it's a gorgeous colorway though. And this is a good time to remind all of us that just because I don't see colors break with dip dyeing doesn't mean you won't see them break with hand painting or with speckling. After 10 minutes, most of the color had absorbed, but I went ahead, added more vinegar, and gave it 10 more minutes on the heat. Next up on our list is some Dharma Dark Navy. This is a color that I love and that I use, honestly use, all the time. Even for, there's a lot of leave no dye behinds with this color, but I don't think I've just dip dyed into it. Um, so I'm honestly not sure if we'll see it break. My rationale for dealing with this color now for this video is that I have seen some reports of it breaking in the Indie Dyer Shopkeeper group. And so I was curious what we might see when we attempt to dip dye from beginning to end into Dharma Dark Navy, Deep Navy. Now I don't remember. As we dip dyed this navy yarn, there is no doubt that there is a reddish finish towards the end. Um, whether or not this reddish color absorbs means we might see some breaking in here, or we might actually be able to capture that breaking. Um, I think that this is consistent to what some other people have seen, and I've actually seen some reports of a weird off batch of uh, this navy color from Dharma. Um, but I think that that red at the end is really, really cool and explains why we get something that feels a little more lavender-ish um, at the end of a, the navy and using this navy color. We checked in on the yarn after 10 minutes and there was still a hint of color left but the color was almost completely absorbed. And you do see that lavender-ish finish on the yarn. I added more acid and we heated the yarn for a final 10 minutes. For the final color of day one, I decided to play with some Jacquard Aztec Gold. Why? Well, why not? And I already had a stock solution of it made up and it's an interesting color. And I'm honestly curious to see what it'll do with dip dyeing, whether or not it breaks. Now, the color happens to be reminiscent of something many parents would recognize. <laughs> parents of young children. But I think that it is a very interesting golden toned color. Now, I'm not sure if we'll see breaking or if maybe We'll just see some color saturation changes, but yeah, it seemed like from the times I've used it before that we might see, it's definitely looking like it's getting more yellow to me. So as I was dip dyeing, so we shall see. So here's the thing. When you have a yellow that's really concentrated, it starts to look more orange. It's one of the natures of that color. Like the deepest, deepest saturated yellows might be gold or feel a bit orange. But right now, right after dipping, I absolutely, absolutely see some bright yellow at one end and more of like a burnt, dusty kind of orange at the other. So I would say that this breaks and that if you're going to do some stuff low immersion um, or hand painting that you might be able to push that breaking further. I will also say that I like this color a lot more now dip dyeing on the skein than I do sometimes just placing it on some yarn low immersion. Um, uh, right now in the pot it is not giving me the, uh, the, the baby poo vibes of the color and it feels very like rich and pumpkin-y and fall. What is color breaking anyway? Colors break when you start off with one color, say a green or a purple, and then as you're dying with it, you see it break apart into multiple hues. So with a purple, you might see magenta and blue, as we do fabulously with Wilton's Violet food coloring, um, or greens maybe would separate into more blue and more yellow. But 
the real way to tell if your colors are breaking and you're getting a hue stitch versus a saturation difference where you have more color at one end and less at the other is to consider if I were to dye and hand paint this yarn with the most saturated color at one end and the less saturated color at the other, would the color at that last end be the same as if when I was dip dyeing? And if it's the same, then it is just a less saturated version of the color. If it's different, if it's say more yellow or significantly more blue, then you know that you saw some breaking. Um, and one really great example of this is when I actually took Wilton's Violet and did a dilution series with it so you could compare that to what a dip dyed skein might look like. And you can see how we saw a lot more breaking with the dip dyeing. And again, just because uh, you see different colors when you speckle with a dye doesn't mean that you'll see it break with dip dyeing. Uh, dip dyeing to break colors takes advantage of the fact that some colors absorb to yarn at different rates. Some like different temperatures, different amounts of acid, and so if you can separate those rates, you can physically separate where they bind on the yarn. And so it's sort of like yarn chromatography, which is really, really fun. Um, and so this is something you might see when hand painting, if you draw the dye on and you can see a halo in a different color, or with dip dyeing here today. I will say that the rates of food coloring tend to be more extreme than what I've seen with many acid dyes so far, but it's really fun to play around with them and I'm excited to explore more colors. As we start dip dyeing in some Dharma Forest Green, I would like to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out and thank you to Karen Siegel and the rest of the Chemnitz Fiber patrons. You'll see some of their names crossing the screen right now. Thank you so much for supporting the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and helping me create fun content with yarn and color. If you would like to learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon and the awesome perks that I have over there, you can find a link in the video description and iCard. I love the color forest green and honestly can't remember if I saw yellowish finish with this in the past or not. But as I was mixing colors for the Stip Diathon, I thought it was worth checking out. As I was dip dyeing the yarn into the forest green, I added another tablespoon of vinegar because it was taking a while for the colors to absorb. It did not ever seem to get more blue or more yellow. I think that this is an example where it doesn't feel like there's any breaking, really just a saturation difference. After sitting in the pot for 10 minutes, I did notice a slight yellowish tinge to the water. But again, I'm not sure if this is something I would have been able to capture, and if I would, if it would have read as any kind of pigment, honestly. Um, but I did let, add a little more vinegar and let it sit aside to cool. Next up is Jacquard Periwinkle. And this is a color that I know breaks with speckling, for sure. When you speckle, you see red and blue speckles. As I was dip dyeing this, I gasped because I'm like, okay, it's looking really blue, it's looking really blue, and then you see the water, and you can see I use a spoon to keep checking it. The water is getting pinker and pinker and pinker. This breaks, and it's the opposite of what we see with food coloring. Woohoo! One note is that this is similar to what we saw with, say, Twilight Gray. So, I don't know if this would work on um, on other yarn types or if it's just going to work best on you know non-superwash wool like this, but that is something that we will need to play around with more in the future. After 10 minutes, our pinker section is looking a little purpley, but, and most of the color is cleared, but there's no doubt in my mind that this is broken and not just a saturated saturation difference. The results are subtle, and so someone might try to argue that um, it is a tone difference, but since the pink is over the whole thing, I don't know, it's a little, uh, a little more subtle than, say, if we were doing food coloring, where there's no question that you see an awesome, awesome color shift. Um, but we have seen this sort of end pink and purple a few other times before, so I am beyond excited. I'm going to leave this on the heat for another 10 minutes. I just added two tablespoons of vinegar, and then uh, we'll check in. After those 10 minutes, 
oh yeah our water is clear um, so I am going to turn off the heat set this aside and let's finally play with jacquard purple once again the first purple acid dye color I played with was jacquard violet and that didn't seem to break for me when I first played with it but did I use stroll and not Wool of the Andes I don't know I didn't hang I'm not including that one in this video so I'm not sure but I also did not observe it breaking with speckling like I did with periwinkle and purple it was immediately apparent that purple is much more red than periwinkle which makes sense for the colors and in dipping this the color got more and more red and you see even with the dip dyeing that the reds aren't really sticking as fast because they sort of drain out as I lift the yarn up um, I would say a hundred percent this is breaking um, and I love this color um, it is beautiful and I think that both of these would be really great candidates for doing some cake dyeing or some other things where you can really take advantage of color breaking after 10 minutes this is looking really really cool like really cool um, the end is it's definitely got a reddish finish there's no question that I see breaking here. Again, some of these colors seem to bleed into each other a bit after the finish, so it behaves a little differently than some of the food coloring. But I'm adding another two tablespoons of vinegar, sort of letting that help mix this up. And we're going to sit another 10 minutes. All right, so this is pigmented enough that again I'd say it's a little hard to say I mean we all saw it go way more pink um, and that is a blue or purple but this is definitely like not as extreme as what we see with food coloring um, so I think that by making our own mixtures of some of these acid dyes we can amplify some of this breaking which I've done in the past with some of the more extreme ones like purple pop so we're just going to have to explore and see and take advantage of this. But I'm going to turn off the heat, add a healthy splash of some white vinegar, and let this cool off so we can absorb the rest of those reds. Here we go. Here are the eight colors that we played with in today's video. For me, I think the standouts when it comes to breaking are Fawn, Periwinkle, Aztec gold, purple, and then maybe radioactive. Navy does break. And I believe that the Jakai Brown does sort of break too, but those ones are so subtle that it's hard to tell. And I don't think forest green broke at all. <laughs> at least not in a way that I could capture it. Looking at our students with radioactive and purple, both of those don't necessarily look broken anymore. I I'm very confident if I had waited longer that I would have been able to see more of a yellow finish on the radioactive. And here, there's no question there is more blue in this end than here. But since it is so purple overall, it's hard. I could see someone thinking it's a saturation difference. But again, if I were to take, say, five different dilutions of Jacquard Purple and hand paint a yarn, this end would be more blue, and the same with the periwinkle. Fawn is beautiful and subtle, and I am so excited to play around more with this color. Breaking, being extreme or not, maybe it is just gonna be way more extreme with food coloring because the rates, especially between red number three and blue number one, are so extreme in terms of the acidity and the time that you could get some super dramatic breaking with a really pigmented color at the other end. With the acid dyes that I've tried so far, we do see breaking, but the finishing color is also significantly less saturated. So therefore, it, there's two sort of variables that we're looking at, a saturation difference and a hue shift, which in some pigmented colors can be really hard to see. No matter what, I love 
this set of yarn. I don't know if they would all work together in one project or anything, but I think these colors are so vibrant and beautiful. I am really, really excited to play with these colors more. Are there any other acid dye colors that you would like to see me dip dye? Uh, please let me know the colors in the comments of this video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you haven't already, make sure you go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. There's a link in the video description and iCard. It's a really great way to help contribute to the channel on a monthly basis, and it helps support the content that I am creating here. And stay tuned, because all of this yarn is going to be heading over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop really, really soon. Uh, my shop is filled with hand-dyed yarn featured in these videos. And when you purchase the yarn, not only are you getting beautiful hand-dyed yarn, many of them in one-of-a-kind colorways, but you are also supporting the channel and the content at the same time. Um, and making space so I can create more colors. Uh, you can also find a link to the shop in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.